Good morning, everyone. Today, we're gonna to be doing another React video. This is another two-parter, and this is a second to the bomb episode, probably the second most requested episodes to react to. It's again from Grey's Anatomy. Now I know I do a lot of Grey's Anatomy reacts, but it happens to be kind of a evergreen series. And it is so popular right now during the pandemic because you can kind of binge watch all the episodes on Netflix. So if you don't know where to watch this, it's all on Netflix. And that's what I'm watching from today. So today is gonna be season six, episode 23. People always ask for me to react to this episode from this season and they call it the shooting episode so i have no idea i guess there's an active shooter situation i'm just guessing i haven't seen this episode i don't know as always i go into these not knowing anything about the anything about the episodes let me go ahead and find it my list okay i think it's called sanctuary oh he has a haircut what's she crying about stop crying what are they crying about but i grew up I learned to read in the OR gallery. Uh -oh. I played in the morgue. That I looked like a pregnancy test. On old <gasps> uh oh. He's bad. He's bad. Appendix. McBurney's point. Oh. Yeah. yeah, tenderness at this point called McBurney's point is kind of indicative of appendicitis. Very Dr. Gray. Who's that? Dr. Gray admitted I'm confused. She's You'll have to excuse me. She's so perky. Who is she? You know what I want? A, little, a little bit of peace in a trauma room. <laughs> Maybe more. I like it. I really can't have my second surgery today. Oh, how hot is my husband's ass? It's very hot, ma'am. If a patient says something that's a little bit on the inappropriate side, the appropriate thing to do is not to chime in and say, yes, it's very hot. That's a very hot ass. Like your husband is a very hot ass. No, you just kind of like laugh and kind of brush it aside. That's what I would do. I would just kind of giggle, like, you know, shake my head, but I wouldn't really verbalize agreement or disagreement because obviously both situations would be either one side inappropriate or one side rude. <laughs> After that, we got the Corvac, call it OR, tell them we're on our way, we're going to ready to transport. Let's go. Yeah. Running. Watch out, coming through. Okay, so um, in this situation, a trauma room is usually kind of just like a C-section room, kind of always prepped and ready because in my experience, trauma centers, or at least um, major trauma centers like the one I trained at, tend to have traumas rolling in unexpectedly coming up straight from the ER, usually sometimes even straight from the ambulance. Like it's an obvious like penetrating gunshot wound, um, a penetrating trauma. I once saw a man with a tree through his entire abdomen. These kind of situations, they go straight up to the operating room. And you might wonder like in, in actuality, where does that really, how does that really happen? And the way it happens is you will have a team that is set for that OR that is dedicated to that OR. That includes anesthesiologists, that includes OR nurse, that includes scrub tech. A surgeon, trauma surgeon will be on call and those people are basically assigned to that OR, the trauma room, the trauma OR I should say, because there are trauma bays and trauma rooms in the ER. And so what that means is they're always available. Now, where there aren't always traumas going on, so they'll usually be repurposed to kind of float other places, but always kind of in the background, available to jump in and excuse themselves from whatever they're helping with and, and go to their trauma OR. So what you probably have is a team that is carrying a pager. This is what I would do whenever I was assigned as the trauma anesthesiology resident when I was in training and they would have a pager and that pager would go off. That would kind of give a small one-liner on the patient's information, like 18 year old gunshot wound, that kind of thing. And then you kind of rush up, start drawing up drugs. You, you ask if you have an MRN, like a medical record number so that you can charge drugs to them. Sometimes it's so fast they don't don't even have a medical record number yet so you have to like create a temporary patient kind of do it it's just you kind of cobble it together and those are the really like ah, situations but you already have like a like an array of tube endotracheal tube sizes lined up you already have like your art line set up all that kind of stuff from an anesthesia standpoint and then there will be like a basic 
major trauma or my you know minor trauma set kind of um ready to be opened but not open usually and so the scrub tech will rush in there start gowning up and start st like opening everything sterilely and they rush up to the or and that's what they're doing right now so basically in the background what you don't see from the or perspective is that the anesthesiologist or anesthesia resident or anesthesia crna is getting ready the scrub tech is scrubbing in and prepping the whole table and everything back table setup the or nurse is trying to get information on the patient as much as possible so that they can start their charting and while all this is happening while they're rushing up so that's why they said call the or prep the or that kind of thing i was asking if someone could tell me where i could find the I'm chief sorry, sir, if you why does this guy want the chief excuse me ma'am it's doctor what i was wondering if you could tell me where i could find dr Derek shepherd um you know i don't know oh he's the chief of can surgery you tell me look you're not even supposed to be back here i'm not a tour guide i'm a surgeon okay oh <gasps> Dude, what the? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus! That is so violent. Uh, what is this episode rated? Like, ooh. Um, in reality, this is probably very feasible. The scary thing about hosp about mass shooter situations, or even just single shooter, like with a single gun, uh, not single gun. You know what I'm talking about? Like just a pistol. Um very feasible because you typically don't walk through a metal metal detector in a hospital and i've always wondered about that like why in such a big hospital or like a major trauma center or things where the emotions are kind of at the most extreme why don't we screen people with metal detectors i have wondered that quite a bit obviously not patients on gurneys and stuff but like visitors company, family members, nurses and doctors. There are n disgruntled nurses and doctors out there. And so mm, I think this should happen and probably will happen in the next decade or so where they'll start making that the norm. And that may be, comment down below if your hospital has metal detectors. I know for certain the ones I've, all the ones I've ever worked at have never ever had sort of a security screening detail. Um, it's funny because with coronavirus, now we do have screening, but it's temperature checks. So I get my temperature checked every single day when I go into work and I have a special thing that I wear that shows that I've been screened that day so I'm free to walk around the hospital and patients and visitors get screened and wear a wristband that's the color of the day so it changes at any rate if they can do that for coronavirus they should probably do that to protect people from a shooting as rare as it may be oh my god oh my god Alex this is really not good Right in his chest, too. He's probably got a collapsed lung, hemothorax. Oh my god. What's her name? Oh. Do we know her? Are we invested in her? Let me know. I like to say hello to my wife every 48 hours. They're married! I told you every Tuesday night I'm trolling for cases. Uh, are you gonna come home early tonight? Because we can order in and I have some stuff to tell you. Yeah, I'll be there. I have to go home. Alone. There's going to be a lot of dirty sex for you tonight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's some drama there. Okay, move on. Somebody shot. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Oh my God. Oh God. Okay, come on. I mean something. Okay, get on with it. You don't think a people is having that much blood? I mean, you learn in med school how many pints we all have in us, but you don't realize it until you see it. What? People, people don't prattle on like this when they're in shock. Oh God. Dr. Shepard, he's uh, probably in his office. Through the patient floor on three and then follow the signs to the main lobby and then you should find it no problem. <gasps> She's gonna hate herself for saying that. Have a nice day. You too. Oh God, Alex! Oh my God. We're on lockdown. <gasps> what? What? Oh, come on. Well, that's a joke, right? It's a drill or something? Nope. Okay. It's no joke. Arizona. Everyone. Alarm the makers of the tiny humans. They will eat you alive. 
the makers of the tiny humans. I really thought it's a hardship for uh, Yeah, frankly, it is. What's their deal? I don't know half of what's going on right now. Hey, Avery, you got a second? Does anybody check their pager? No, we've been too busy. There's a shooter in the hospital. <gasps> I want you to stay in the room when the patient is stable. I want you to tell Hunt and Altman that... Okay, so let me just take a little moment to talk about what's going on here. So they're issuing a lockdown. Clearly they don't have a code for active shooter situations. So maybe in today's times, they probably would. And to be honest with you, I don't know what the code would be in my hospital for an active shooter situation, but it would probably go out the same way in a massive page um, text sort of situation. It would be locked down. They'd probably tell everybody who's doing surgery to finish up very quickly and probably recover their patients in the operating room because they don't want people moving about like coming out of the operating room and into the recovery room. Like they probably want each little unit sealed off because that way they can see if someone's moving around that shouldn't be, maybe that's the active shooter. So anyway, that's probably what's going on. But so far, the biggest thing that you guys asked me to comment on on this episode and probably the next one is how realistic is this situation so far could happen. I know that's scary and I'm not trying to be a sensationalist, but this is all very, very, very possible. And it's something that if you are an administrator for a hospital, if you are in any, in any way, shape or form or capacity as a leader in a hospital, this is a very real possibility. And you should always give thought to protocols and coming down with a scenario that you um, have available in case the worst should happen. So that's five shots. I'm counting shots. You can't have that much more ammo. Oh my God, it is. Elevator, go up the stairs. Oh my God. Alex Karam, no. Oh my God, this is so intense. What? Stay here, don't move. I'll come back and get you when it's clear. Just stay here, don't move. Pulse they are so not staying there. <laughs> He's on the floor. The shooter. That's seven shots. Eight. Mary, play dead. Wait, wait, what's happening? Just do not move. Do not breathe. If you kill off Miranda Bailey, this show is over. I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. Okay, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him. Help Dr. Percy. Betadine? <laughs> okay, someone needs to tell Dr. Sloan how to say betadine. Come on, Mary. This is a lot for anybody to take in who's not in the medical field, even if they are in the medical field. Um, there's, there's a, a dead security guard. Now, Shepard said, didn't bother to tell me this. Well, Shepard said it. You already told me what Shepard said. Shepard said not to say anything until he was stable. It's not his fault. He's following orders. I'll take him up myself. Everyone else, stay here. I'm coming. No, no, you say put. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. He has a penetrating injury to his chest. You don't get a vote this time. I'm coming. I'm oh my God, God no.
Garrick. Shepard? Sir, you shouldn't be here. It's not safe. I know it's not safe here. That's the point. This hospital isn't safe. You don't recognize me, do you? What are they doing? Oh, my God. Mr. Clark, shut up. No talking. You're not the man here. I'm the man. And uh, Mary, give me three of those, please. And the other... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so what she's what she's getting is an EKG, and this is just a three lead. Um, so this is pretty standard if you want to get like a basic heart rhythm, just to make sure that he's not going into a dangerous rhythm or anything like that. It's kind of lucky that they happen to have a crash cart in the room. You can see there's labels. There's a red crash cart. All crash carts are typically red. It's very lucky, fortunate, and normally they're not stored in patient rooms. So I don't know if it was just for convenience or plot or writing, but that's usually not in the room. EKG. You're a good man. I can see that in your eyes. Can you see it, mine? Can you? Careful, don't press. Dang it! Our gallery. Oh shoot! What is she doing? How many times are they gonna do this kind of stuff to Derek Shepard? <laughs> okay, so we're at the end of the episode. Finally! Oh my god, that was nerve wracking. Um, so what we're dealing with now is Alex Karev is still has still got a non-exiting gunshot wound to the right chest. So they're, they did a chest tube, he needs blood, he's in a closet somewhere. And we've got another dead doctor, I don't know her name. I, was she a regular? I don't, I don't know who she is. We've got kids on lockdown and oh my God, I'm so glad that he didn't stop by there. Dead nurse, dead security guard, and Derek Shepard with a chest, a, a gunshot wound. Let me see, where was it? Was it right in the middle? To his left, yeah, so basically right right to his heart. So fortunately, as with sudden cardiac arrest, best place to have sudden cardiac arrest is in the hospital. Best place to have a penetrating gunshot wound, probably the hospital, assuming that you have people and resources able to take care of you. So I, I know he's gonna make it. I hope this is not a spoiler to anybody. You shouldn't be watching this if you don't want spoilers, obviously, but I pretty much know he's gonna make it because he, he lives into the other seasons and we've done react, episodes with him in the other later seasons so but it's gonna be interesting that's for sure so they're married she's pregnant she hasn't told him all these people are dying there's an active shooter this is a nuts episode who wrote this episode i need to know who wrote this episode that's what i need to it doesn't say well that is really interesting in the second episode which will be a short follow-up it won't wait as long as i did the last time to do part two because i'm going to be filming this back to back not a whole lot of medicine so not a whole lot of learning opportunities here in this episode but i know that the number one question you guys asked me is how feasible is the situation i would say very feasible with one caveat i don't know over how much time this is taking but it based on what they've been able to do with resources and what I'm imagining a timeline based on how long it would take to 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 gather patients together to put everything in lockdown to spread the word to finish that really critical surgery that doc Dr. Owen and Dr. Han is their names, we're doing on that very critical man who is in um, a car accident would take. And that's over a period of several hours, it was what I imagine. But why has SWAT not um, entered the building? Why has police not entered the building? I realize they're on lockdown, but police should be able to move freely throughout and clear all the different levels and look for the shooter. That I would say is probably the only flaw in this situation. Um, other than Dr. Sloan saying betadine. <laughs> 
podcasts. Those are the only two things I can think of. Otherwise, very accurate episode. I think that in most circumstances in an active shooter situation, the police would probably set up a barricade. They would definitely do lockdown, but they would also probably enter the building. I could be wrong. I'm obviously not a police expert or any kind of security expert, but I, I would imagine that that would have happened a lot sooner, albeit that would not lead us to the plot point and drawn it out as dramatically as it has done in the last 43 minutes of this episode. So um, stay tuned for the second part to this episode of An Anesthesiologist Reacts, and that is gonna be season six, episode 24, Death and All His Friends. I'm gonna guess that they have to operate alone on Derek Shepard, but they're gonna need an anesthesiologist for that. So we'll see who that gets to be. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, definitely a lot of drama, definitely a lot of accurate scenarios that could definitely happen. So if you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe if you are new. I make videos like this every week and I would love to have you back. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.